All right, vacation is over and we're back. Well, I am anyways. Jeff and Todd are working on some ship renovation behind me, so they're not going to be in this video. First of all, I hope all of you guys had a happy holidays. And second, Viper Sword hooked me up with this new artwork. Check this out. So if you like the new design, let her know. I'll link her Twitter in the description. Now, let's get to the video at hand. Spoiler alert, it's queer kid stuff again. Well, sort of. You see, Lindsay, the person running that channel, has another channel called Lindsay Aimer. It's an older channel that is now five years old. This is going to be the last vid I do on this channel for the foreseeable future, as Lindsay is apparently stopping on YouTube, and honestly, I don't want to keep making videos on the exact same person anymore. But this video that I found shortly after I made my last video on her channel, I think it's disturbing, and you will see why in a sec. The title of the video is, Are All Kids Queer? No. All right, all right, all right, all right, joking aside, let's get into this shit. This is absolutely disturbing. Hey, Lindsay here. Today I wanna to talk about if all kids are queer. So we know that kids are strange and kind of weird, but I think that all kids are actually just real queer. So you think every kid on the planet has the big gay? So what, do kids just magically become straight over time? Like, how does that work? Because that would suggest that it's a conscious decision, which it isn't. You don't choose to be straight or gay, just like you don't choose to be short or tall or whatever. And another thing, which keep in mind, is going to be a reoccurring thing in this video and in Lindsay's body of work as a whole. Why are you looking at kids this way? Like, even on her main channel, it's like, why do you feel think the kids need to know this shit? Like, shouldn't this be something kids figure out on their own? Like, you know, like I'm pretty sure 99.9% .9 of everyone else did as they got older. Why are you concerned about the sexuality of children? I feel sick by even saying that, by the way. When children don't have a full concept of what sex, sex is, and they're not sexually active, at least not by choice anyway. Like, I feel like I need to get Chris Hansen on standby right now. But, okay, so basically I've been reading about this theory in queer theory, in queer studies, called the theory of the queer child, which um, was basically coined by this lady, Catherine Bond Stockton, in this book, The Queer Child, or Growing Sideways in the 20th Century. I know it's a really weird book cover, but whatever. And she talks about this theory in terms of metaphors in movies and books and all that cool stuff. Um, so that's this. And then All right, this sounds like some gender studies Bechdel test level bullshit right here. I'm going to fast forward a bit because she's talking about where she's getting this stuff. All I'm going to say about this is, so this is what passes for modern academia, huh? We're going to argue that all children are gay by default. And then, and then what, like do most of them just somehow choose not to be gay or, or something? I don't get how this works. Oh, and the people she is supposedly learning this from or who created this quack theory is what I'm going to call it, is a person named Catherine Stockton, at least they're one of the person, people behind this. And they're an academic and queer feminist in African American studies and serves as the director of gender studies at the University of Utah. So you know this is going to be some absolute horse shit. So basically what this is talking about is the queerness of children and how queer kids are and basically saying that all children are queer. So Catherine Bond Stockton has these four ways that children can be queer. The first is the ghostly gay child, the second is the grown homosexual, then there's the Freudian queer child or the not yet straight child, and there's also the child queered by innocence or money. So let's just go through those real quick. Did you say Freud? As in Sigmund Freud? You mean the guy who most of the things he theorized or implied and suggested have been proven th false thanks to modern psychology and, you know, medical science and shit? You know what's the first thing my psych teacher told me when we were about to start talking about Freud? He said that most of the things Freud stated have been discredited or found untrue or inaccurate. But for historical reasons, he wanted to teach it anyway just to show, I guess, the progression of psychology as a field. You couldn't find someone that's more credible nowadays. I hope you don't think the whole penis envy and Oedipus complex theory is legit. Because, um, yeah. And what is this whole not yet straight child thing? So do you do think that children start gay and then transition into being straight? 
At least that's how it works for most humanity. That's what you think, huh? I'm morbidly curious how the rest of the LGBT crowd feel about this because that sounds like we're getting into some Mike Pence gay conversion therapy territory. <laughs> I'm going to hell for that, aren't I? Um, the first, the ghostly gay child is basically what she talks about when people, when like gay people talk about how they always knew that they were gay. I, I totally knew that I was gay from like, a, when I was like a real little kid, but I just kind of didn't have the vocabulary for it, for it yet. And also just didn't understand it at all. So you knew you were gay, but you just didn't understand what it meant. Okay, that might be true. That, I don't know, I can't look, you know, obviously I can't, you know, mind read or travel back in time to then. But let's just say the benefit of the doubt and say she's telling the truth and that that's true for, for the vast majority of people. I don't know. But how do we get from that to all kids are inherently gay, like, or started out that way? Like, that's a big fucking leap. So that's the ghost of the gay child. Then there's the grown homosexual who is the kind of projector of that idea of the ghost of the gay child. So like that's kind of just me as present projecting that notion of me as a child knowing that I was gay even though I didn't really have that concept back then. It's funny, in, in response to your last clip, I was actually gonna bring that up that memory isn't super reliable because your brain is gonna fill in gaps and reorganize and recontextualize things when you recall it. And sometimes insert things that didn't even happen, but to you, the memory will feel legit. It's the reason why eyewitness testimony by itself in like a court of law is usually not enough evidence and needs to be backed up with something else or, you know, or someone else needs to have a very similar account or something that doesn't contradict it. So it's nice to acknowledge some actual science here. Um, she goes into it further, obviously in the book. And then there's the third one, the child queered by Freud or the not yet straight child. She uses Freud to talk about how children are all sexual. Hello, is this Chris Hansen? Yeah, yeah, I, I think you might want to look into this one. Okay, just because YouTube's new policies and shit, and I don't want people, you know, twisting this and taking this in a direction that I'm not going with with this. I'm not saying Lindsay is a pedo because that is a very serious accusation. And outside of what she says on her channels and just, the, you know, the nature of her channels and this video alone, I'm pretty sure that's not going to be, that wouldn't be considered concrete evidence of anything that she's done anything like that. But I'm also not going to sit here and pretend that what she's saying isn't something that a map or a minor attracted. You know what? I'm just going to call them pedos. Cause fuck that whole PC name for the minor attracted persons. They're fucking pedos, okay? That, that sounds like something they would say. Hell, it reminds me of some of the statements Amos Yi said in his debate with Combat Wombat. If I'm still on Wombat's channel, I'll link the description. You should watch that. If you have a very high tolerance to just stupid and fucked up arguments and points. But that's the kind of, that's the same shit that he says, or very similar at least. I haven't watched this debate in a long time, so yeah. And again, I want to make this clear because I know YouTube's new policy or someone in general is going to get pissed off about this. Again, I'm not calling Lindsay a pedophile. I'm just highlighting that the statement that children are inherently sexual is disturbingly similar to what pedo advocates say on Twitter and in some cases YouTube. And Lindsay, if you end up watching this video, which I don't think you are, this is why people don't like you and your channels. Because you are blatantly sexualized children by your own admission, because you say in both the beginning of this video and at the end of this video that you agree with this theory, by you saying that children are inherently sexual, that sets off red flags with people, including me. And I'm trying to be level-headed about this, but that is a red flag for me. The internet is full of degenerates and i don't mean the kind you know who post like really fucked up memes and shit i'm talking about the kind that need to go to jail the kind of degenerates who say things like this like this goes beyond just teaching them about what it means to be gay or trans which personally on younger kids i don't think is appropriate for them but this goes beyond that into a territory that's far more insidious and sinister and once again i just have to ask the question i asked earlier why are we talking about the sexualization of children or about children's sexuality they are children Jeff, where's the fucking soundboard? I need it.
Here you go, bro. Thank you. and how there's basically like the ghostly straight child because um, people kind of assume that children are asexual and they're not really allowed to be sexual, but Freud kind of turns that on its head and basically says, no, all children are sexual and yeah, even if they're straight. Um, so that's kind of basically the same thing as the ghostly gay child, but it's the ghostly straight child. Then the last one is the child queered by innocence. Rewind that shit, please. Innocence is this adult construct that's kind of put onto children and it doesn't really match up with what kids are and do. Innocence is this adult construct that's kind of put onto children and it doesn't really match up Innocence is this adult construct that's kind of put on to children. <sighs> Maybe I jumped the gun on the Chris Hansen joke and the FBI joke. I think it should have gone right here. Like, what the fuck do I even say to that? You know what? Fuck it. I'm pressing the button again. So when people refer to the innocence of a child, that can have multiple meanings. In this context, you mean that children do not understand or comprehend sexuality or sex yet. Or if they do, they have a very juvenile basic understanding. People watching this video, when you were a kid, if you can remember, how many times did you find like images or videos or even seeing people like kissing or anything like that? How many times you found that gross or weird or anything like that when you were younger? I'm, I'm sure, I know I did, I know my friends did, I know we probably aren't the only ones that did that, that seemed pretty normal. I mean, there's a whole thing of, you know, girls having cooties and stuff as a kid. So, that's what people are referring to, Lindsay. It don't take a university degree to figure that shit out. Most kids begin showing sexual behavior around the age of 13. You know, when puberty kicks in? Not before, Lindsay. The idea, this idea that all children start out gay and are sexual is first off just wrong, and second, a really fucked up notion to support or act like is true. In a sense, in my opinion, and this is how I think a lot of people will interpret, will agree with me with this, is a nice way of saying ignorant or lack of knowledge, especially when it comes to sexual shit in terms of children, because this is something they shouldn't be knowing about. And, and I shouldn't have to say this, and I'm feeling really disgusted that I have to say this. Children's bodies are not physically ready for sexual interaction. Like, you do realize it can cause all sorts of physical and psychological problems. Children are taken advantage of because of their naivety, because, let's face it, their brains haven't fully developed yet, they're still developing. And even if we concede it, like you say, that innocence is an adult construct, I would argue this is a good construct. Because any fucking doctor will tell you that sexual acts from a child will lead to numerous unintended consequences that can have lasting effects both physically and psychologically, which I don't think any sane individual would want. Like, how fuck in the head are you and the people who came up with this theory? Like, how fucked in the head are you? Like, seriously, do you understand the implications of what you are saying? <sighs> I'm glad we're close to the end because I'm actually getting really pissed off now. Money or color basically talks about kids who are already kind of under umbrellas of adult queerness and how those kids don't really get that projection of innocence upon them because they are kind of the younger versions of queer adults. And so they're kind of queered by their race status or their um, economic status. Okay, then there's the last one of children being queered by the economy. Kids are totally cut off from adult normative economies because they just don't contribute to it. Like a kid's, most kids' relationship with money is the weekly allowance, and I think that that makes kids really queer. And the only real way for kids to be involved in the economy is if you're an emancipated minor, which interestingly enough is not a possibility in the UK, things I didn't know before. And yeah, I think kids not really being able to be involved in kind of capitalist normative society is just contributes to their queerness. I let that clip play because I don't know what the fuck she's talking about. Are you saying that because kids aren't exposed to the same reality as adults, it makes them gay or reinforces them being inherently gay by default? What, what, what the fuck is this video? I need a bullshit translator. How does children not having to worry about managing money and finances and bills 
equal they are gay. What the actual fuck? And yeah, so that's kind of the theory, the overall theory. I think it's really interesting and I kind of agree. I mean, I think if you've ever just kind of seen a kid do a weird thing, kids are totally weird. I mean, they eat their own boogers. So you agree with something that makes no fucking sense. You know what? I'm not even surprised. I'm not. This is the person who was running queer kid stuff, by the way, and quote unquote educating your kids. If this is the kind of quality education that universities are spewing, then we in trouble. Holy fucking shit. I see why the Doomer meme is a thing as fuck. Her logic is kids do weird things. Somehow that equals they're gay. I honestly think Lindsay is confusing the different meanings of queer because queer can also mean weird or unusual or just, you know, not normal. But admittedly, people don't use that version of the word too much anymore. I also have to point out that Lindsay didn't bring any studies to the table or any research or data or anything to remotely back this shit up. And of course, this video predates the Queer Kid Stuff channel, but I think you can see where the genesis of this started. <sighs> anyway, if you look in the comments of this video, assuming it hasn't been taken down yet, I'm actually surprised she didn't, when people found this video, no one is buying this bullshit. I mean, just look at this shit. All right, I'm done. I gotta go help Jeff and Todd with the renovations and shit. So I'll see you guys later.